bless those who weren't able to give to, to be able to do that too as well. But we ask that we use these tithes for your uh, for your will, for your for your for to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll go ahead and transfer up over here. Um, there's no other song after that. We'll go put on invitation. I think I'll have it. Okay. All right, y'all. We are uh, we are in the second part of this series of the sermon series, and I I usually don't like to put a, a little summary or disclaimer before I preach, but I'm going to go ahead and do that this morning. It's going to be a controversial sermon, so I'm going to warn you in advance. And I know a lot of y'all like it when I preach controversial. Just make sure you like it for the right reasons is what, I, what, is what I'm getting at. And um, what I mean by that is if, if my, my controversial preaching is not, I'm not aiming to, to pick on a particular uh, audience or pick on someone particularly. Uh, so just make sure we, we, we remember that. And, I, and I, don't, I don't like to offend, but sometimes, quite frankly, the gospel is offensive to those who are, living in sin and we live in a world full of sin and and you know this the sin that, that I'm talking about has, has has plagued our Christian institutions it's plagued our churches it's plagued our political system it's plagued it's it's ever it's rampant everywhere but we don't have to look that far too far outside uh, our Baptist faith to, 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 to find it so uh, last week we were on part one so now we're uh, after Jesus was arrested, Jesus was put through a series of so-called uh, fair trials. Two of those trials took place before Pilate. Pilate was a Roman governor in charge of the region. Pilate sentenced Christ to death on the cross. Through that death on the cross, Christ took the place of many so that they might be with him. And I don't have the words up there uh, yet, but you can, if you want to, you can look up there, look up Matthew 27, Matthew 27, starting at verse 15. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barnabas, uh, Barabbas. And so when they were, had, had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask Barabbas, and, uh, to destroy Jesus and, and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Uh, Barabbas. Sorry, I, don't know, I knew I was getting that name wrong. Brother Charles said, you know, said to me a long time ago, you know, it doesn't really matter if you get them right, <laughs> right or wrong. I think no one, no one gets them right, but I try to get them, try to get them, try to get them right. Uh, Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. And he said, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified, children. Then he released for them Barabbas. And having scourged, Jesus delivered him to be crucified. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray for this sermon this morning. I pray for it to glorify you. I pray for the courage to say the things that need to be said. I also pray for the wisdom to say the things that don't need to be said. I pray that everything I do glorifies you and no one else. In Jesus' name, amen. The Jews that handed over Christ, Jesus, to the authorities, knew that he had done nothing, had not done anything wrong because he wasn't guilty of a crime. They did so because they're envious of him. To envy someone is to be discontent or have resentful longings, uh, you know, aroused by, because of someone's possessions, what they look like, their quality of life, where they stand in the, you know, the community, their popularity. Um, they were jealous of Jesus because they knew he was either the son of God. Some of them knew that. Uh, they knew that he did do good. They knew he performed miracles by the power of God. He had the presence of God with him, and he had a righteous heart. They could not stand the fact that Jesus said he was the son of God and then proved it by his actions in fulfilling the uh, scriptures. There were many in the people in that day who were jealous of Jesus because of who he was and what he stood for. Today, there are many people just the same. They're jealous of Christ, who he is, and what he stands for. 
People who are willing to do whatever it takes to put themselves in the limelight rather than let Christ rule. Christ took the place of all those people. We have to remember that, that Christ took the place of all those people. There's no need for to be jealous, for he is our creator, he's our Lord, he's our king. His word tells us that we can be remade into a new creation. All we have to do is come to him and let him transform us. You know, Pilate, I think he may have had some moment in his life where he was heroic or uh, brave. And I say this just because you think of a Roman soldier most of the time, I think that, or someone that got to a level of governor, I mean, he had to have some, he had to have some, some positive, strong qualities to get to that level. Uh, but at this moment, Pilate was weak-willed and gutless. He was a man of absolute power, but yet he feared the people he ruled. He kept asking the crowd, who do you want to be released in hopes that they would change their mind? Pilate knew that Christ was innocent. The man even marveled at the Lord. If we look at verses 13 and 14, Pilate was amazed by Christ, but not changed by Christ. He refused to take a stand for what was right. He knew that Christ did not deserve death, yet would not stand against his people, against the people. Fear of people judging us is a terrible, terrible thing. Judgment of the Almighty is an eternal thing, though. It's a big difference, yo. Big difference. Judgment, fear of people judging us can be terrible. I have, I have, I have that fear, by the way. Maybe it's a sin, too, as well. I, I, I want, I'm a people pleaser. I like to make people happy. But we have to remember that the most important person that we need to make happy is God. And what we do through him is eternal. So what, what people can do is also only temporary. All right? So God's eternal. Remember that. And... God promises that his judgment will be forever. Pilate refused to stand for what is right. His popularity was more important than justice. There's a credible amount of people these days who will trade justice and righteousness for popularity. We have a corrupt court system, you know, with judges and lawyers who are more worried about doing what makes them look good in the eyes of the people. You know, I, I, I've seen it happen personally. I've, 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 uh, when I worked at Channel 6 a long, long time ago, I, I've, seen, I've seen what happens when they have a, a man that they wanted. He might, be, he might have some bad context. Let's say this, maybe, but the crime that he did, are they accusing of him? He didn't do the crime. And they know good and well that he didn't do the crime. But since they want to prosecute him because of who he is and what he does, they will, they will continue and continue and continue it. They'll even try to, they'll even try to take the, uh, the audio man, the soundboard man, who I was at the time, they'll try to take him down for, for, for bringing in true information, for reporting facts. So we have groups, Christian groups, who'd rather take a stand uh, to, speak out against right, to speak out against righteousness than take a stand against sin. Many people claim to be Christians, but fight against Christian values and morals. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Amanda Tyler. Amanda Tyler is, is a person who's from Texas. She claims to be a lawyer. She claims to be Baptist. Even a, a publication that claims to be Baptist, the Baptist Standard, is not, is not, is not that. It's not, it doesn't represent me, by the way. Uh, it used to represent me maybe a long time ago. They don't represent me. Her name is Amanda Tyler. She actually, she's a native Texas. She spends more time going after Christian nationalists and uh, this, in this category, Christian nationalists, patriots, white evangelicals, everybody that fits the category of the Democratic Party, who do they go after? And again, it's not a political sermon, but she goes after conservative Christians. She goes after Christians who follow scripture. Now, don't get me wrong, on the national scale, if you call, sometimes you can say a Christian, if they're, if they're if they're out there glorifying Trump and Jesus, then that's a problem. But if they're out there supporting their country, because they, they, they love their country because God commands us to love our country. God commands us to follow the scriptures, not say, well, this scripture might say this or it might say that. If the scripture says what it says, it's the most simplest thing in the world, man. You follow the scripture. That's why it's so simple, y'all. That's why, that's why I beat my head against the wall. We have these churches who claim to be Christian. We have these organizations who claim to be Christian, but they can't follow the whole thing. They won't they follow some of it, but
but they won't follow the whole thing. You know, you have a seminary school out there who, who knowingly hires homosexuals at the front desk. You know, and look, I would hire, I would hire a homosexual or transgender. I would, if, at my place of business, if they're a good worker. But if my place of business is a church, absolutely not. You are knowingly allowing a person who's living in sin to represent God, and that's a problem. That's a big problem with me. And if, just in case you want to know, there, there are scriptures that command you not to be a transgender, by the way. It, it starts with don't wear women's, men don't wear women's clothing, by the way. That's, that's, <laughs> I think that's the first start. So we have Christians out there who are not Christians. They claim to be Christians because they, they spend their whole time. They want to mock and they want to attack other Christians. It's like, you know, and I, and I, I seen it happen in seminary school. When I first started seminary school, I see what they started doing, the race baiting thing. It's divisive, just like the, uh, and, and I'm going to pick on the Baptist standard this morning because I've, I've gone back, he sends me, he's a nice guy. I talked with the guy, he's the, the head guy of the, um, of, of the Baptist standard, and I, quite frankly, there's some pastors in here in this community who don't like me because I'm very vocal about the Baptist standard. Look, I'm sorry, if you're publishing a, if you're a Christ-centered magazine and your head publication is Trump as a Nazi, let me ask you a question. How does that glorify God? If you did it with Biden too as well, how does that glorify God? So that, that, that's my question. At the end of the day, how are you glorifying God? And I've asked this, I've directly asked this to, 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 the, to and I'm not going to make my whole sermon. They don't have an answer for it. Why? Because they answered, and I'm not taking political sides, they answered to the Democratic Party. They don't answer to Jesus. Their God is, 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 is not the God they say it is. They answer the Democratic Party or they answer the money. I don't know, but it's not Jesus. And I've seen what they've done to our, to our, to our schools, our community. They've done the race baiting. That's a classic thing. They do the race baiting. But trust me, I'm going somewhere. This is going to, you're, you're, I'm, going to land, I'm going to land it and you're, it's going to blow your mind. So we have a society that's setting us up to deny the word of God. They put you and they pit you against each other. I was trained, I was trained by the black Baptists. I was trained by the best. That's who gave me my, my formal training. And I, my opinion, they were, the, they were the best because they were no nonsense. Now there's very few of them left. Why? Because they've all, took, they've all taken the bait. They took, they, they took the, the race bait. They dangled it out in front of everybody. And, you know, I'm, it, it, Anglo churches are just as bad, too, as well. We've let, we've, let, we've let politics push us in the corner. You know, and the truth be told, the beautiful thing about the gospel is that they've set everything straight. The Lord set everything straight. Our spiritual heritage is our most important heritage. When we become a part of this fellowship, it's not based on color. People get, they cringe. They say, oh, I cringe when you talk about color. Well, why is the world talking about it? Why are, you letting, why are you letting the worldly system tell you what to do? Why aren't you letting God tell you what to do? Why aren't you following what his scriptures say? The simplicity is if we follow what the scripture says. The scripture is so simple. It's these, these, these two, two, two uh, young boys right here can understand it. We don't, you know, I'll tell you why. It's not because we don't understand it, it's because we don't want to understand it. That's why. It's the same thing we, you know, you can talk about, you can go, you can go walk into a, a, a bar or a hotel, anywhere in the world, you go walk to any office, you can talk about God all day. You talk about Jesus, it gets awkward, it gets uncomfortable. You want to know why? Because he holds you accountable. It makes things personal. But we have to be careful, though, because we live in a system that, 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 that Satan's, Satan's running about. And what I, what I think, this is what I think, y'all. I think why he's attacking these certain groups, why he's making, of course, he likes to make us fight against each other, is that he is, he is paving the way for the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast, y'all, if I, if, I if I was to be worried about anything, or scared about anything, it'd be the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, now, for the most part, as Christians, as believers, the only, the only damning sin for us is to deny Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. However, there will be a period 
where if you were to accept the mark of the beast, that is also a damning sin. But what I, what I like about Scripture, is Scripture is clear. You will knowingly accept it. It's not going to be something that's going to be pulled under the, under the wool. Like we, I've heard some, some congregations, they're, they're, oh, it's the shot. It's not the shot. It's not something that you're not going to, you're going to knowingly accept it. And what these groups are doing is, is basically, I, they're in, the same, in, in the same sense on a lighter scale, is that they are, they're, they're, they're almost, almost accepting Satan. And one day, if we, if we keep on living in sin and allowing sin, then they will, they will accept it, knowingly accept it, because at this point they've already in too deep. But back to what I, what I was getting at is that the Word of God and His Word is the simplest, purest, most beautifulest thing in the universe. And it's comprehensive to all. And by following it, loving Him and following it, we align. We align. We align with Him. We align with all our brothers and sisters, no matter what color they are, no matter what color of the country are, even if they speak a different language, we align in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spiritual unity that's unbreakable because it's through Jesus Christ. But, you know, Christ refused to change his stance in the face of opposition. Remember that. Christ refused to change his stance in the face of opposition. He stood for the things of God. Just a little, just a little bit of bad was not okay. Remember that. Just a little bit of bad was not okay with Jesus. What are we doing in the system today? We're allowing just a little bit of bad. And I get it. I get it. Controversial topics like, uh, you know, transgenders, homosexuality. We talk about, you know, talk about, you know, you know well, we, we need to make the Bible racial. We need to, you know, we can't allow any, any sin to be accepted. Now we can. Now this this week I need to make I need to just drive this home too and understand. When I say that, that does not mean that people aren't allowed in our church. All right, I think most of y'all know that, but I have to state that that means that we are open for everybody because we're all sinners. Okay, but but we're telling telling those who don't want to listen to the one parts in the Bible. You have to do every part. Everything is in the Bible because it's supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? If we let if we if we if we let a person in this world today be in charge of it, guess what? You wouldn't have much of a Bible left. <laughs> well, this is gonna offend this person. This is gonna offend my 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 my, my sister-in-law. This is gonna offend, you know, my uh, this is gonna offend one political party. You know, we 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 would have we would have nothing left the Bible. Yo know? Christ died for all those people, though. He died for all the sinners. He took their place. But don't let don't let don't let folks of the world dictate our values and morality. You know, but Barabbas was also a notorious prison was a notorious prisoner. The other gospels tell us that he had led a rebellion and was a murderer. He had been convicted and sentenced for his crime. He was to pay the price for the things that he had done. There was a, a man that, cha- that came that changed all of that. Jesus was innocent. There was no doubt in the mind of those who ruled over the trials. However, Jesus would take the place of this known criminal. Barabbas is an example for us all. Why? Well, we may not be murderous. We may not be leading rebellion. We may not be re- 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 leading a, a, I don't know, a a so-called insurrection, whatever they want to call it. We may not be leading, a, a, I don't know, a, a beer party or whatnot, but, 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 but we're like him because we're all rebellious. We're all rebellious. Okay? I, even if you think you're not rebellious, guess what? You're, you're rebellious by thinking you're not rebellious. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we're all rebellious. I know I am. My mom, my mom can, my mom and my wife can attest to that. And I'm not proud of it. Um, but... We're all rebellious. We've all we've all turned we've all turned to our own ways. We've all been sheep that've gone astray. Okay, we're all rebellious to the plan of God at some point. Every person is a sinner except for Jesus. Okay, we we have to remember that. So whenever I'm calling on particular on particular groups, okay, and I want to be particular on particular groups, remember that we're all the same. We're all sinners. 
Okay, but there's a big difference when we take the sin and we make the sin a, a, a beautiful, godly thing. And we allow it to, to, to be put on a pedestal in our church. That's the problem of society today. And I'll, I'll be quite frankly, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about homosexuality. I'm talking about transgenderism. When we take those in the churches and we put them up on a pedestal, that's the problem with that particular sin. Okay, and I don't want to, I, yes, it sounds like I'm picking on that sin. I'm using that example because that's exactly what's happening. It would be just the same with, with people living uh, uh, together without being married. Same thing with, with, with drugs and alcohol. It would be like taking drugs and alcohol and say this is part of God's kingdom. This is part of God's plan. It's a sin. Same thing with murder. So I could use it with any sin. So we have to remember, though, we all have our own, we all have some rebellious nature. We all have a little bit of sin in our lives. We are in need of a savior. We are in need of a savior. The one who to change us and remake us, our nature, our sinful nature as rebel rebels against God. In Christ, we have a new nature. We have a nature that's godly. Barabbas was a murderer. Most of us here, and I think think have never murdered anyone. I hope. And, you know, that may be, that's probably true. <laughs> Jesus brought about a new thinking. He brought out the spiritual. No longer was a sin a matter of the physical act. Sin was a matter of the heart. Today the same is true. Sin is a matter of the heart, y'all. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that if you have ever hated someone, then you have committed murder in your heart. There are very few here that can say they have never hated someone. Good news is, Jesus took our place. He paid the price so that we did not have to. He died so that we might live. All we have to do is believe on him. Remember what he did for you. Remember what he stood for. Remember that he did not... He did, not, he, he did not say some bad is okay. He said no bad is okay. No sin is okay. And then he gave it all on the cross. Will you stand for him today? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you for uh, the, um, I thank you for the courage to say things that, that, that need to be said or, 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 or that, that I felt through you. I thank you for for, for everybody's here. I pray that the words that I said were not, we're, we're, we're taking only to glorify you and that we see these things out of love. Now we also see ourselves first before we look at others. We need to see how we, our own sin. And we need to approach those who I might have mentioned today, those, those groups that I might have mentioned today, we need to approach them out of love, not out of hate. We need to love them, not the sin. We love the sinner, not the sin. So we need to separate the difference. But we also need to have the courage to call, call out sin, what it is. We can't, we can't just say, oh, okay, be, well, because I want to uh, make someone happy with a, with a PhD or a publication or a certain group, amount of money. We do not answer the world. We pray that we have the courage not to answer the world because we answer to God. Sometimes it's going to be, a lot of times it will be harder to take that road. It will, it will cost us physically, cost us financially more. But at the end of the day, we know that we have done right by you, that we have pleased you. And I pray that we continue to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. I dare not end this sermon without offering a lifeline. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please make a profession of faith today because tomorrow is not promised. You can make one on that feed, by the way, too, as well, if you aren't on our live feed. Uh, so please come up. If you need special prayer, please come up. Uh, if you would, uh, want information, uh, I, most of us, everybody here is a member in the audience, but if you want to, we got a lot of online folks, so if you want to join our church or information about that, please send me a message. Thank you. 490, or 490, yeah. Please yeah, turn to 490. If you'd like to stand, please. Oh,
Lord, lift up Duke, Lucas, Rodriguez, Lisa, uh, Jeff, Annette, Jensen, Sarah Taribe, and Todd Taribe, Veronica Nelson, and Ted Nelson, Veronica Mondo, Alex Salinas, Rosemary, Paul Medina, uh, Bradley, Andy Machaca, uh, Severa Soto, Marcela Guzman, uh, De Debbie Alanis, Ochoa family. Lift up Zach Gillette, David Olgive. Olgive. Also lift up uh, Yvonne Jones. Yvonne Jones just messaged us this morning. She's got, she's in a lot of pain. So we're going to lift up Yvonne. We're sorry you're in so much pain this morning. We love you, sister. We love you, Rosa. Lift up Rosa. We love Rosa too very much. We love everybody. Love it. So we've been miss y'all too. So lift up the Lynn Jones Jr., senior. Lift up our military first responders. Lift up everybody that's on this list too as well. And Kevin Gillette's going to go ahead and close us out in prayer. So Father, we, uh, we thank you so much for what you give us, Lord. And we thank you for Pastor Brandon and his message this morning, Father, and just pray for uh, love for these people, Lord, for the uh, lost world. We just pray that uh, you would help us to uh, find the courage to talk to them and to bring them to sal salvation, Father. Uh, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the safe traveling mercies that uh, you're going to bestow on us, Father, and we thank you for uh, just being able to come to the church this morning, Father, and to worship you and to praise you. Just pray that you, you would be with this congregation as we go about our day, Father. Help us to uh, praise you in everything that we say and do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.